Imagine you live in a street where you can sit outside and chat with your neighbours. A street where your children can play safely and where the car driver is a guest and must drive slowly and carefully. A street where people come before cars. In some countries in Europe, streets like this, called home zones, are commonplace. Across the UK, interest in the idea is spreading fast. In July 1999, a group of people from Britain went to see for themselves, visiting home zones in the Netherlands and Germany. This is what they found. I'm Charmy Boyd and I'm from a community group called Five Roads Forum, which is a group of five streets in West London that are very keen to try and get a home zone within the area. 18, 19, 20. I'm Ken Spence, I'm Road Safety Officer for the City of York and I'm here to see what the Dutch have done. I'm Martin Hemingway, I work for North Yorkshire Police and my role within the police is traffic management, so I get involved with highways issues uh, for, for York and North Yorkshire. Uh, so anything that happens on a road uh, is something that is very, very important to me and very uh, dear to my heart and what I do. Okay. My name's Dick Long, I'm from Lewisham Council and I'm here to learn all I can about home zones. My name's Martin, I'm from Sheffield. Uh, I live in the inner city area of Sheffield and uh, uh, I live on a street, this is a, it's a small sort of street and it gets used as a rat run a lot. I'm Margaret and I'm from Wolverhampton uh, and I'm here because um, we have a community group in my road. We're trying to get our road designated as a home zone. We think we can learn from the experience of people in the Netherlands and in Germany where kids can still play in the streets. Well, the street on the right is interesting because it's a, a bone earth. Uh, the idea is that it's a shared surface street that people can drive in and play in and park their cars in and uh, and have a good time as well. So let's go around the corner and have a look. So this street has got a special sign and the special sign says that there are houses, the cars can come in the street, but there might also be adults walking around and children playing. One of the Bona ideas was to take away the uh, take away the, the clear, the clear uh, running through uh, that motorists could see uh, to make it so that there were diversion. So here there's about 200% diversion. If you come into the street, you've got to move one, one lane sideways. Cars would have to be, to be forced to slow down. So that's the whole idea behind the uh, design. In the homework we were set, I was looking at some of the photographs of uh, <laughs> the, uh, the engineers and, and the guys digging up the road and it looked a phenomenal task and I just wondered how much disruption, how long it took to lay this beautiful home zone area. Uh, well, it can take quite some time. They did uh, two, three streets in, 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 in one year, uh, five in the next year and, and so on. Is there a, a conflict between what people wanting to come and park in the area and use this as a parking space? there are conflicts like that. Um, you don't solve them by uh, rearranging streets. You only solve, solve them by having some system of parking uh, license. Our school is about seven minutes by bike. Yes. We bought our property here because of this area, because of what it's like. It's uh, the charm of this, uh, uh, of this area. It's very nice. 
At evening when the when the the, the sand uh, yeah. locks is open, yeah. I close it. We find it very children friendly, and in fact, we have to tell the children they're having a wonderful time here because possibly we'd be in the same culture if we were living in the UK as well. We wouldn't yeah. let them out the garden. I think when we first moved to this house, they were toddlers, and I did indeed keep them in the garden when other children were playing outside. Yeah. And I had to obviously be convinced that nothing was going to happen to them, and plus they climbed over the gate and got out, so there wasn't much I could do about it. Perhaps it's just been luck, I don't know, but there haven't been any accidents here, and I'm sure we'd have heard about it. I think the only one I heard was a child falling out of a tree. And so. <laughs> so, well, it just shows, I mean, this is 25 years old, you know, so maybe if we have the vision to look ahead for 25 years, we can change it back. I think you have to <laughs> start re-educating everybody to let them know that it's okay to let their kids play outside. And in fact, it's really, a, it's part of their social upbringing. They've got to learn to get on with other people. What a wonderful way for children to grow up and actually learn from each other rather than being cooped in and battery hands. I suppose my main objective of being here is, is to learn from uh, what my fellow engineers have done in, in Holland. We will put concrete on the road and it would be unsightly, it wouldn't be pleasant. But what they've done, they've actually put in a lovely feature and a tree in the middle of it. So it adds to the environment, but yeah, in terms of engineering, is achieving what the purpose is. In terms of the ideas, we are as good as anybody to have the individual ideas, but bring the jigsaw together and those pieces which makes the complete picture nice and uh, very pleasant and that is the lessons for us. What I loved about the second place, the new place, was that before even a single brick was laid, that the people who had bought apartments or houses in it were consulted on the, the placing and the design of play equipment and what, where, where the play equipment should go and what type there should be. And I thought that was wonderful that the, the, community, the community who were going to live there were involved right at the very start. Because we, had a, we, we could look at the plans that were there and we said, well, we all have children maybe it's not a good idea to put that in front of someone's house or whatever and they listen to us every street inside this area is uh, a pedestrian area in fact and uh, you can't drive over 10 miles something like that and the pedestrian and the cyclist and, a, and, a, and a, a, a driver in a car they all have equal rights i have the same right as that car when i walk up to him from the right i go before him nice and some people can't understand the way it works because they think i'm stronger in my car so i'll go before you but actually they can't do that so it, it's it's more like a cultural thing that happens here people start getting used to that idea every new residential estate should be planned to be a home zone and where possible that developers should be encouraged um, to, to involve the people that are going to live there
the idea of uh, using public space to grow things in. This street could have been quite dour without um, any gardens in here. So um, I think it started in Amsterdam some years ago, the idea that residents were allowed to take one or two bricks out of the, uh, out of the pavement and put planting in. When I came to live here five years ago, I thought, well, it's just, it's just a small part. I, I take out another brick, you know? <laughs> and now because of the sewer, the sewer was laid again and uh, the whole street was relayed. And I was so surprised to see that the, the city hall decided that we had bigger, bi bigger gardens because <laughs> they, they liked the initiative and it looks so nice if you see that everybody is trying to, to do something. I think half of the space of this street now is given over to the residents and really quite a small space left for cars to go through. I'm not quite sure whether it's worth uh, just measuring how, uh, how much or how little space. That's just three metres of roadway marked out. The Bona idea um, requires people to have um, a discussions with the city council, obviously with the engineers, with the planners. But there's also a sociologist and landscape architect, various people working on the, uh, the project to see if the street was appropriate. This street suffered from um, commuter parking. There's a hospital just across the road, so it was quite um, pressured by extra parking and residents got a bit fed up with the way things were going. More than 20 years ago, 25 years ago, a woman called Francine had the idea. It brings the people uh, together. It gives you a reason to go outside when the children like to play in the street. It gives the, the, the adults a possibility to talk to each other. We walked in the street and we fell in love with the street and the house also. But then later, after we bought it, I heard people from my work talking about this street. And they were saying, oh, that's a very nice street and it's very social people are they all know each other they said it's like one big family and i thought uh oh <laughs> 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 the british group visited a whole series of home zones some seemed to work better than others but why the group was keen to determine what it was that would make a home zone successful. It's a home zone that seems to have been built quite a long time ago. Uh, it's run into disrepair. Uh, we can see uh, cracked concrete slabs. We can see uh, bollards that have been run into, gardens that haven't been maintained. Cars parked all over the place, in places that they should be, but also in places that they shouldn't be. Uh, it also feels that the council, I suppose, haven't maintained it, uh, and that there's got to be an, an ongoing input into a place for, to keep it well looked after and somehow to help people own it. How long ago when they did made these changes? 16 years. 16 years yes. they did it? Yes. And was it a good thing? Yes, it's very good. Better than for before. Is it good for the children to play? Sometimes yes and sometimes no. When the children here play, we say, you can park your car there. They say, no, no, I don't find a parking place. The cars drive. Shh, 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 shh. And I think it's important for people to own it. Um, and for me, the feeling here is that they don't own it in quite the same way. Well, and I think it may be because it's right, a passing yeah. population, but I don't know. Uh, they certainly ha they, they could have looked after it perhaps a bit better in their home. And these are six, uh, these are six, six story dwellings, right? Yes. So that's, in anybody's terms, that's bound to lead to a dense development, which is bound to lead to a bit of loss of ownership of, uh, of the street. I think if you just try to move bollards and leave acres of empty space without doing anything with it, no environmental advantage, no play advantage, no nothing, then that'll, that clearly will be disastrous. I'm just wondering if you could highlight some of the, the mistakes, some of the, the problems that were unforeseen and you, you've learned from. And some measures may be good in one neighbourhood, but awfully bad in another right. one. And yeah. you have to think it over depending on the characteristics right. of a neighbourhood. So there's no one model that there, we should follow? No, there's no one solution right. for everything. Right. If you don't have cooperation from the residents, 
uh, themselves, you can forget the whole plan. Don't start it, I would say. People have to learn to live with the idea that they're living in a residential area, which is not meant for, for fast traffic in the first place. That home zones are not only effective for the traffic situation, but also yeah. for, for instance, the social situation yes. the of the community. people who are living and the community. Having seen some of the areas that we've visited, it's very, very good to see them uh, working in practice rather than on pieces of paper. It's a place of safety. It's more than just traffic calming. It's more than just slowing the traffic down. It's creating a community. It's creating the community spirit. It's keeping people safe. It's making them safe from crime or the fear of crime. It's a whole bundle of things that go together. You know, I didn't imagine they'd be as good as they have been. They've been absolutely brilliant. They've worked so well. Everybody had a right to walk down wherever they wished. If they wanted to walk down the middle of the road, they could. If they wanted to cycle down the middle of the road, they could. The quiet, that the noise level <coughs> and the lack of exhaust fumes was really mm. noticeable. It was almost like it was like a safe haven, nearly. You know, it was it was just it was perfect, nearly. As as a road safety officer, uh, my concern is, is is overall safety. And having people on the streets is the best thing to guarantee safety. If we clear people off the streets, the car has won. And that makes a much more dangerous environment for everybody. First of all, yes, probably you were looking both ways and probably the wrong way first. <laughs> <laughs> you know, probably the wrong way first. But after, after a while, you just felt that safe there that you knew that you could just step out and, you know, you'd be all right. From my point of view, we need to, I need to go back and... Firstly, in terms of my local community, where we want to have the home zone, talk to the people there more and give them more feeling of what it's all about. But traffic engineers like myself have to talk to other, to other traffic engineers and you know, say that, look, it's possible, and, and it's very desirable, in fact, and, and here's some of the ways that we can combine what we're doing to achieve this. I believe it's crucial that children are also involved in the consultation process. Yeah. Um, if children are going to have ownership of, of the play areas, I think it's terribly arrogant of adults to assume they know what play opportunities children want. I mean, not all the, ch the kids show up, about 30 to 40 normally come, and we normally do, like, you know, big sheets of paper and everyone writes their ideas down. And it's, like, it's just that the adults actually do ask what their kids want and it's like it makes them feel involved and more like, you know, it'll make them feel more proud of the home zone and they will feel like it's more that and more theirs because of it. I think we would want people to, to, to think that they can do it, not somebody's going to do it for them, that they can actually be involved and be part of the whole process and do it themselves. We've only been trying to do this for a year and a half campaign for home zones and in that time we have already become a better community in that we all know each other more, we can walk down the street and the majority of people I'll be able to say hello to. Currently we've been asked to develop home zones working technically within the current legal uh, framework and it would be useful if we can get uh, some help from the government and maybe change the law. In a year and a half to two years time the next Home Zone study tour and video will be shot in England. Anybody else? And Ireland. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and Scotland. <laughs> and Wales. <laughs> Britain. And perhaps in five or ten years' time, this kind of street will be the kind of street that people expect to be living in. It won't be an oddity. It won't be 
um, anything that's out of the ordinary. Because many people say these policies that you're talking about are very radical. Will they work? Well, they're not very radical, and yes, they do work, because they're here on the ground in Netherlands and in Germany. There are huge savings to be made across the board from introducing this, cu this cultural change which home zones will be a part of, and that's worth investing millions and millions in, because you'll get it all back again. In England, the highway is for moving, and if you try to do anything different on the highway than move, you, um, you, you, can, be, you can be prevented from doing it. And here the highway is public space to use for all people, I mean for everybody to use in, the, in, in a whole range of different ways. And that's, that's significantly different from the way we approach it in, uh, in England. And I think that's the, the major thing that needs to change. We need to realise that this, this, this can happen. It could be done really very easily. It, doesn't, it requires a spark of realisation that we could change things. I don't think you need much more than that. Yeah, you have it. Personal initiative. Yeah. A woman thought we've got to do something, went to the city hall, asked, and, and this is what happened. And we're still, 20 years later, we're still very glad with it. For me, it's very important uh, being at home in my street. In August 1999, a month after the Home Zones tour, the UK government announced its support for the creation of the first nine Home Zones in Britain. Residents across the country are starting to work with local councils to redesign their own streets, to create streets for people.